Welcome to Guns and Gear Network, everyone. Appreciate you tuning in today. Uh, we're going to do a little discussion about the FJ Cruiser bug out vehicle project that I'm working on. If you follow my video, you know I recently bought an ARB bumper, and the only thing I was waiting on was to get a winch, and I have since got that in here. And we're going to discuss winches a little bit. But the main purpose of this video is to help people with the Smitty Built winch in particular this is the uh, xrc 9500 and we're going to discuss um, about how to clock this winch and i'm going to discuss that first in case you don't want to listen to the other portion of the video you'll at least understand about how to clock these so there was a lot of controversy i read where you can't clock them this that and the other matter of fact i had a uh, uh the company the parent company that owns smitty built uh four-wheel drive i think four-wheel drive parts um at the store the one of the technicians or the store manager actually told me that that winch cannot be clocked well i wound up calling smitty built direct they said it could be and then there was still some controversy online whether it could or couldn't be blah 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 so they confirmed that it could be clocked and that's why i bought it so and we'll discuss a little bit more why i bought it and why i chose smitty build and the xrc 9500 and all that a little down the video here so let's talk about clocking. The instruction manual that you get is not, it's not that it's vague, but there's, it's just, you got to pay attention. So this portion over here, when I reclocked it, and the reason I needed to reclock it, the ARB bumper, you have to mount with the, this is the feet, see the holes, that's where the mounting is, so that'd be called the foot. Uh, the foot of the winch has to be forward. So normally this winch would be looking like this. And if you notice, I've already clocked mine. That's why these are down here. Normally this is up here and this is around back. So I wanted mine on top and this right here, here. So then now this would mount into the winch, I mean to the bumper this way and you slide it in from the back and you mount it to the front. So I had to clock it where I could access this here and be able to turn it and then have enough cable where they're not down here at the bottom and that's where they were so i had to clock it in the up position so when i mount all my cables they're up top and i can route them around where i need to so this side here is pretty straightforward guys as far as uh clocking there is um a couple bolts let me let me get to the right page here so i can keep up with it so there's a couple bolts let me pull this back up there's a bolt here and a bolt here. That's the only two bolts you remove. And then you can pull this completely off. And that is where your gears and everything are. So once you do that, you're going to see, I'll see if I can get it in a close up. You're gonna see this is what you're gonna look like. So you've taken it apart, you've got this, and now you've got this piece here. So there is 10 retainer bolts, retaining bolts that hold this on. You're going to have to take these off, then you rotate it where you want, and then seat these uh, and put these back in. So it can only be rotated in 36 degree clockwise or anti-clockwise or counterclockwise direction because of it has to line up with these bolts and then that piece is what mounts to this so that's why it does that because this whole piece the foot and everything comes off when you pull that off that's why so that's the deal with that so you cannot screw it up as long as you're turning this portion here to line up with the holes and it coincides where you want it see if you noticed i was trying to mount this straight up and down and it's a little forward of me and the reason is is because in the straight up position it would not clock perfectly uh it would not uh, the retaining bolts would not uh go in uh, coincide with the holes so that's why it's actually facing a little bit forward instead of straight up and down that's why so if you run into that that's the situation on this side uh is that and then once you put it back together i found it was easier to set the winch straight up like this and then the weight of putting this on kind of helped gravity helped pulled it down and the weight pulled it down onto it when i first put it on it didn't go all the way down so you kind of got to play with it a little bit there's a shaft that runs in there and you just kind of got to play with it and make sure that you're jiggling it and kind of wiggling it and it'll finally fall into place and it'll make sense and then you just put these uh these bolts here back in just make sure when you put them in it uh it kind of is is kind of countered a little bit i guess because of the way it's designed and then you'll have to kind of play with it to push it down and get them to go in kind of get them started on both sides first before you tighten anything down don't over tighten it 
and so forth. Also keep in mind, whenever you're clocking a winch, you run the possibility of um, the uh, disrupting the integrity of the waterproofness of the unit. It even says that in the instructions. If you put it back together, you're not breaking any silicone seals from the factory or anything. It's not like it's glued together or whatever. So it's basically designed to be put together and taken apart with just, you know, certain amount of... Uh, um, tension on the screws and bolts and then or torque and then matching up with rubber gaskets so just keep that in mind it's no big deal uh should be fine so let's talk about this side because this side is where it got a little tricky so there's two bolts on the end here that you take off and i'll show you that on this page so it says right here take those two bolts out i did well, then it says, loosen long bolts and pull them out from the winch motor. And then it says, rotate the motor to the required position. Well, I went to rotate this and it would not rotate. It wouldn't turn. It wouldn't do anything. Because it does not say anything in this instructions about pulling this motor away from this uh, bracket or foot here. You have to pull it away from it and then turn it. Two things. It is super tight on here because it's sealed, right, for the waterproof uh, part of it. So what I did was I took a rubber mallet and I started tapping. This is probably not the best. These posts are not the best, so don't tap real hard, but just kind of lightly tap it. And then I was able to, because it's rubber on the other side, because it kind of clocked it a little bit that way, it loosened it up here, but not on the back. So then because it's rubber, it kind of grabs, and I just kept tapping it, tapping it, because this comes all the way off. And... Um, then you can, once you do that, here's where, here's why I couldn't turn it. On this portion here, there is a retainer pin that is in there, and it's only about that long. And it coincides in this with a hole. So that's why you have to pull it out away from that uh, retainer pin, out of that hole enough to turn it. And then you can turn it any way you want, except for it has to be done in 90 degrees, and here's why there is holes that coincide for that retaining uh, pin. Here's the problem though. I looked, turned it, put it back together, it would not seat down correctly. I looked and I kept looking. I couldn't figure out why at first. And then I realized there's a retainer pin. But there was no hole for the retainer pin to fit in other than the one they had set from the factory. So I called Smitty built and talked to um, the technician over there, and he wasn't real sure. We talked about it, looked at it. He, he so he got his uh, engineers involved. They, you know, I even took a picture and sent it, and they couldn't quite figure it out. And they were actually getting ready to resend me one of these pieces here to put it back together. And you know, maybe they just missed doing the holes, maybe from the factory. It's the only thing they could figure. Well, I had him on the phone. I said, "Well, look, there's a rubber gasket around there." on this piece that this matches up to. I said, let me do this. Let me pull that rubber gasket away from the metal and see if there's holes in behind it. Well, sure enough, they were. So here's the thing. You're gonna have one hole from the factory, at least on mine, and then the rubber ring, and then underneath that rubber ring, there are holes that match up for to put that retainer pin back in in the 90 degree increments all the way around. So you'll have one at the 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock position, all the way around. So what I had to do was, and after I found it, the engineer uh, that I was talking to, he said, oh, okay. So I just took one of these tools here, and I found my position where I wanted to clock it. Then, where the retainer pin wound up spinning around to, I just found, I just pulled the rubber back just a little bit where I could find where the hole was, and then I just simply pushed this into that uh, rubber to cause the hole. And then I was able to put it back in. Again, a rubber mallet comes in handy for this. Again, I flipped it straight up, so uh, that way the gravity would help pull it down in the weight, and I just simply tapped lightly all the way around the rim of it and sat uh, so it would seat in real good. Now, here's the other thing that came, that happened. That retainer pin, if you're not careful, can come out. So you just gotta be careful not to lose it and make sure that uh, if it does come out, you put it back in, it, it does serve a purpose. The other thing that I ran into is they'll tell you when I was talking to the technician, it said, does not say anything about it in here. When you pull this, when I'm tapping it off and I pull it away from this portion of the winch, 
um, they said of the motor, don't pull it away too far. Well, I didn't know exactly. They said about five millimeters, you know, just a little bit away. Well, I went up trying to, when I was doing all this, I went up pulling it a little too far. Well, what happens is inside this motor, there is a shaft and then you have like brushes or bushings that are around and there's four of them. There's one, two, three, and four. And what happens is there's spring tension. So they hold on there. So when they spin, that's how they work. Well, when you pull it past that, it'll actually clamp down on the outer edge of it. And when this piece won't even go back on. So if you do that, you're going to have to get somebody to pull two of them apart while you pull two of them apart and then slide it back up on the shaft. Um, so if you run into that, that could happen. So anyway, guys, I hope that's helpful. A, you can uh, clock this winch. B, um, it, uh, it just has those hole problems that you're going to have to address and, and so forth. Uh, yours may have the holes. Mine did not. Don't know why. But at least I was able to work it out, and the guy at Smitty Bill was real nice about it, and he said, hey, I didn't even know that, so they're going to make some notes, and they may even change some of these directions. These directions are a little vague, to be honest with you, because they don't tell anything, because they act like once you undo this bolt, this thing just freewheels, and you can turn it easy. It does not work that way. So just keep that in mind when you're clocking this. And like I said, the guy at the uh, retail store did not think this thing could be clocked at all, and I guess if he tried it and saw that he couldn't spin it, I guess that's why he thought that maybe, but... Anyway, guys, hope that was helpful. Like I said, I'm excited about finishing up the project. There's still other little things I'm going to do to it. Uh, so my next video, I'm actually going to install it and kind of show you a little bit about that and so forth. Um, but let's talk winches just for a minute. The reason I chose Smitty Belt, and I looked at, because this is a $299 price point. That's the average price. I actually caught this on sale uh, with a company for $249, including shipping. So $250, bucks including shipping. Um so price was a factor. I'm not building some extreme off-road vehicle thing. Um, it's just for casual off-road use, so I'm not too worried about it. Didn't need anything just crazy expensive and all that. And 9,500 uh, pound capacity is more than enough for an FJ Cruiser. So they, the part of the reason I picked Smitty Built price warranty because they actually offer i think it's a three year on the electronics and twelve i mean and lifetime on the mechanics of this thing so that was part of it and also the availability of parts because i looked at the harbor freight ones i looked at some other brands i looked at some kind of off brands uh, on ebay in different places in the same price point and i just didn't want to go through the issue of not being able to get parts so like the Harbor Freight one, even though it gets pretty good reviews, to be honest with you, my biggest concern was Harbor Freight is not a manufacturer of winches and parts and pieces of four-wheel drive stuff. So they look at the cheapest manufacturer, you know, that they can get and that fits what their needs are and they manufacture it. So part availability in a year or two, pay not, you know, I could even find parts on their website. Maybe they have them, but I didn't see them. Smitty Built, you can buy all kinds of parts. So that's why I chose Smitty Built was parts, warranty, price point, reputation, all that over all those other choices that I had. So, and I didn't want to spend a lot of money. Um, you know, I've had uh, other four wheel drives in the past, had Warren winches, stuff like that. So, I didn't want to spend that kind of money on this project. So, pretty excited, guys. I will uh, post up again uh, when I uh, get this in. I may try doing a video while I'm putting it in. Uh, my neighbor has agreed to help me out with this uh, little thing because he's got some power tools, our, like air tools and stuff, which will be helpful in this little deal because you have to take the bumper completely off again in order to put this uh, winch in there. So anyway, guys, hope that was helpful on the clocking. If you had any questions, you can post those below or anything like that or any comments, uh, what have you. But uh, anyway, guys, appreciate you tuning in. If you got any questions, post those below. Give us a thumbs up. It's down there. Also down there is the share button. Share content. It helps us get the word out about Guns and Gear Network, which is greatly appreciated. As always, guys, like, share, and subscribe. Bring another video shortly. Have a great day.